Welcome to Wild About Watches. Once again, this is the new kid on the block. This one I'm keeping. I had problems with the Gravity Master. Please check out the video on that one, which I returned. But I'm keeping this one. And the old faithful, the Mud Master. So here we have the Mud Master on the right and the Range Man on the left. Briefly, the reason why I bought the range man was because I was watching Extraction. And when I was watching that film, I was curious to know what the, uh, the main actor was wearing in the film. And it transpires it was range man. What I'm gonna try and do is sort of walk you through some of the differences between these two watches, because both of these are current watches, meaning both of them are on the G-Shock website. The only difference is the Rangeman here is only available in their blackout, which personally, you know, I don't like. I bought this one from eBay, which came from uh, the United States. You know, you either buy, so you either buy this, you know, obviously on eBay or other places are available, I'm sure, or you buy it from Casio, but as a blackout, or of course you have the GWG 2000 as an option. Now, one question that I was asked is which do I prefer? Well, it really is a very personal point, to be honest. I think for legibility, I think the GWG 2000 is just easier to read. Comparatively speaking, it's a bigger screen and those hands do stand out a lot. And you can tell the time, you know, very, very quickly with those hands. Whereas with the digits on this, you do sometimes just have to stop and look because they are in that small section down the bottom. You, of course, have a small section on the GWG 2000. So from a visual point of view, being able to tell the time, I must admit I prefer the GWG 2000 Mudmaster. Now, there's a few things that you should just bear in mind. First of all, it's effectively twice as expensive as the Rangeman. In fact, I paid more because it came from America, so it originally cost more plus the import tax. Although actually, I got away with import tax on this one. That was lucky. Um, when, I, when I bought the... Uh, oh no, it wasn't that one. When I bought this Frogman, this came from Japan, and unfortunately, I did get hit with um, import duties on that one. So, but effectively, this watch is twice as expensive as this watch here, at least. The reason why it's uh, three times as much, of course, is the build quality. I'm not going to go too much into build quality. I mean, they're basically both, you know, G-Shocks. So, of course, the build quality on them is going to be top-notch. But given that this is, as I say, about £700 and this one is about £300, you know, Clearly, there is a difference in the, in the build quality, and I think it's something to do with, uh, with the metal that's used in there, plus the construction. They both have A, B, C. In other words, they both have a compass, barometer, and altimeter. Now, the main difference is with the GWG, you enter each individual item with its own dedicated button. So in other words, if you want the compass, you press up here, and that takes you straight to the compass, one button. If you want the altimeter, then you press the bottom button down here, and that takes you to the altimeter. And if you want the barometer, you press bottom left, and that takes you to the barometer. If you press the bottom left button again, then that is where it takes you to the temperature. The temperature here is not 29 um, degrees. I kind of wish it was, but it certainly isn't. So that's kind of how you access, you know, your three or four 
main functions on this watch. So each item has its own dedicated button, pretty much. This one, every single thing is done through this central computer button here, as it were. So when you press it the first time, you'll get one beep and you're in the altimeter mode. You press it a second time and you'll get two little beeps and you'll be in the compass mode. When you press it a third time and you will get three little beeps and you'll be in the a barometer mode. Now the barometer mode also you can see gives you your thermometer and that is the only way as far as I'm aware that you can access the temperature is via the barometer. And then when you finish, long left, bottom left, of course, brings you back to the time. In the same way as on this one, you could be in the altimeter mode and long left or even a single left brings you back to time. Now, let's see what other functions we can do on here. And this, I have to say, given that it's been updated, I do think that it's missing at least one function. I think it's a shame that they never put on it a step counter. And I certainly think it's a shame that they never put a sunrise and sunset function on it, given the cost of this watch. Now, if we press top left, that toggles you through the window at the bottom, the day, date and month, the barometer, you can see it's dropped, but now it's climbing. And the time, I've got it set for 24 hours. And then that's it. With this one, if we press top left, you have the barometer setting at the top. So you can now see the date and the day, March the 7th, and the barometer dropping and rising. Press it again, and you can see the day. Press it again. So basically, in fact, all it does is toggle between those two things, look. <laughs> and that's it. Okay, moving rapidly on. If you press bottom left, that takes you to world time. I won't do a tutorial on this one. If it proves reasonably popular, you know, I can do a rundown on how to use this in another video. If anyone wants a Tony version, then obviously let me know in the comments below. You have your stopwatch. What did take me a little while to uh, think, this OH, for some bizarre reason, I was thinking that it was Ohio, but of course it's not, it's your hours. And of course your current time. This one here has your stopwatch. So press bottom left to get that one going, bottom left to get that one going. So that's the stopwatch is going. Then when we press bottom left again, it takes us to the timer on both of them. And that's relatively self-explanatory. Press it again. That takes us to the alarm. Press it again. Now, here you can see, this is where things change. Here you have the world time on the GWG 2000. Here, which is a really nice feature, you can see you have the sunrise and sunset time. The top one, it says sunset, and the bottom one says sunrise. So here you can see that at 1943, the sun was set, and at 6.22 in the morning, the sun will rise. And if we press the down button over here, then you'll notice that we can change the date. So the 4th, so the 12th of, so the 12th of April of 2022, it gives you the year. Notice it gives you the, the date and then the year, then the year clears. And then on the 16th, you can see sunset will be nearly eight o'clock in the evening and sunrise just after six in the morning. And of course, if you press the top button up here, that toggles back through. And that's, I have to say, then you have your recall, your remote control, which is for your time, your world time, you know, for setting the time. 
And then this is the RC which you have down there. So you can see that that one was corrected on the 7th at 5 past 5 in the morning. And this one was corrected on the 6th at 2 o'clock in the morning. So this one didn't correct this morning for some unknown reason. And then we press bottom left again and that brings us back to the time. And then press again and that brings us back to the time there. One other difference here is when you're in compass mode, oscillator, compass, let's say you want a bearing that is in that direction, southeast. If you press the bottom left button, that saves that bearing. So you can now see that in the top window it's saying 125, so that when you're walking, you can then put the bottom window at 125. So that will help you walking, you know, on a bearing. And also, this window here, as you can see, when you're walking on course, that lines up. And when you're off course, then that little line moves to the left or the right. And then this one down here is indicating north. And then when you finish, if you're walking on a bearing, press bottom left to clear it. And obviously your compass then shows north with the three lines and east, south and west there. So that was just one little additional function on, on there. If you're in altimeter mode, you can press and hold bottom left. So when you are in the altimeter mode, top left toggles you between these lines here, which presumably will go up and down as you walk and climb or descend. And this, and this funny little thing here, which you can reset by being in that mode with the plus minus zero, all the numbers there, and then press and hold bottom right, and that resets it back to zero. Personally, I think this is of limited value in that it basically tells you how high you have climbed and then how far you've kind of like come back down again. But if you go up and then back down to the same place, it's just going to show the zero plus it's going to be based on, on the barometer. So it may not be completely accurate either. So personally, I think that's a little bit more of a a gimmicky thing than anything else. I, I suppose you could use it if you were on a known height. You know, say the mountain or the hill you were on was was 500 meters, and and you knew that you had to go down to 600 meters to turn off. You know, off a bearing. I suppose that you could zero this, and obviously 1,000 meters down to down to 600 meters is obviously a descent of 400 meters so I suppose that you could reset that at the top of the hill walk down and when you get to 400 meters that would have been around about the point of turning off although you could just as easily if this was on 1000 meters and you were walking down, just wait until it gets to 600 meters and you've got exactly the same thing. So I think it's a little bit of a gimmick, personally. You also have something similar on here, which I think I may have shown in another video, but it uh, is even more gimmicky and that it only goes up to around about 80 meters or 800 meters depending on <coughs> on the setting that you're in i really don't see the point of of that you know at all to be honest but i still gave you my opinion on it of course when you're in the barometer section i do notice that this is in inches and i can't quite figure out how to change it to Hector Pasquales or millibars. Um, I'm guessing there may be a way, but given that it came from America, I mean, like maybe there isn't. I can change meters and feet, but not millibars. With the barometer, you can, of course, 
you know, use it to have a rough idea as to what's happening to the weather. So obviously in both instances here, you can see that the barometer dropped and then, you know, and then climbed back up for some, you know, some nice weather. So both of them, I believe, have a system where you can turn the light on and off. The Rangeman is 92 grams and the GWG 2000 is 107 grams. That is a 15 gram different. In the hand, it is noticeable. You can tell that one is heavier than the other. But wearing it, I really don't think in the long term you're ever going to notice 15 grams difference on your wrist. Both watches have solar powered. This one gives you low, medium, high indicator. That's my little rundown on a few uh, software differences between these two watches. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you managed to make it to the end and enjoyed. Please like, sus subscribe, share, hit that notification button for more videos in the future. And please don't forget I have another channel under my own name, Tony Hobbs, on all things camping and walking and things like that. Please feel free to pop over there, check that out and subscribe there as well. Thank you.